Good, okay, so now let me spend just a couple of minutes to return to a point that I raised before. I was saying that the axiom that we had about additivity might not quite be enough. Let's illustrate what I mean by the following example. Think of the experiment where you keep flipping a coin and you wait until you obtain heads for the first time. What's the sample space of this experiment? You might have, it might happen in the first flip, it might happen in the tenth flip, heads for the first time might occur in the millionth flip. So the outcome of this experiment is going to be an integer and there's no bound to that integer. You might have to wait very much until that happens. So the natural sample space is the set of all possible integers. Somebody tells you uh, some information about the probability law. The probability that you have to wait for n flips is equal to two to the minus n. Where did this come? That's a separate story. Where did it come from? Somebody tells this to us and they ask, and those probabilities are plotted here as a function of n, and you're asked to find the probability that the outcome is an even number. How do you, bow, how do you go about calculating that probability? So the probability of being an even number is the probability of the subset that consists of just the even numbers. So it would be a subset of this kind that includes two, four, and so on. So any reasonable person would say, well, the probability of obtaining an outcome that's either two or four or six and so on is equal to the probability of obtaining a two plus the probability of obtaining a four plus the probability of obtaining a six and so on. These probabilities are given to us. So here I have to do my algebra. I add this geometric series and I get an answer of one third. That's what any reasonable person would do. But the person who only knows the axioms that I posted just a little earlier may get stuck. They would get stuck at this point. How do, how do we justify this? We had this property for the union of disjoint sets and the corresponding property that tells us that uh, the total probability of finitely many things outcomes is the sum of their individual probabilities. But here we're using it on an infinite collection. The probability of infinitely many points is equal to the, to the sum of the probabilities of each one of these. To justify this step, we need to introduce one additional rule, an additional axiom that tells us that this step is actually legitimate. And this is the countable additivity axiom, which is a little stronger or quite a bit stronger than the additivity axiom we had before. It tells us that if we have a sequence of sets that are disjoint and we want to find their total probability, then we are allowed to add their individual probabilities. So the picture might be such as follows. We have a sequence of sets, A1, A2, A3, and so on. I guess in order to fit them inside the sample space, the sets need to get smaller and smaller, perhaps. Uh, they are disjoint. We have a sequence of such sets. The total probability of falling anywhere inside one of those sets is the sum of their individual probabilities. A key subtlety that's involved here is that we're talking about a sequence of events if uh, by sequence we mean that these events can be arranged in order, I can tell you the first event, the second event, the third event, and so on. So if you have such a collection of events that can be ordered as first, second, third, and so on, then you can add their probabilities you can find to find the probability of their union. So this point is actually a little more subtle that you might appreciate at this point, and I'm going to return to it at the beginning of the next lecture. For now, enjoy the first week of classes and have a good weekend.